Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In this one, we're going to build a single stand YouTube studio. So one stand that rolls around, holds your camera, your key light, and your audio. And I've been thinking about this video for a long time, so I'm super happy to finally see this thing alive. And I'm actually using it right now. So if I grab the stand and not talk because my audio is gonna be weird, I can move it around. And the lighting doesn't change and the sound doesn't change. Let me go the other way. And as you can see, I can essentially move this thing around and have an entire YouTube studio go with me. And I don't have to continually move all these different stands and tripods. So in the description, I'll have timestamps to each section of this video. We're gonna talk about the parts I use to build this thing. And then also when we build it and finally the final results and what you can do with a setup like this. So let's not mess around. Let's get straight into the parts list for this build. Now I didn't cheap out and get a bunch of really garbagey stuff. I really wanted a nice solution that was very heavy duty and can grow with you over time. So you could put a C200 on this thing, no problem whatsoever. So let's get into it. First and foremost, we have the stand. This is a $150 rolling stand that I absolutely love. I talked about it in my stands and studio setup video, which you can check out. It gets really tall and it's super compact when it comes to its footprint, which is important because I want this whole thing to be able to be collapsed and maybe put in a closet or the corner of a bedroom or studio and be ready to rock and roll at any moment. You're also going to need two grip heads, a 40 inch or 20 inch grip arm depending on how far you want your light to swing out. And then an LED light for your key. Now I am going to recommend two options. One is the LC160 from IntelliTech. It's what I'm using right now. And the reason we want this kind of style of light is because of its weight. It's very lightweight. It's gonna work great on a setup like this. An alternative would be the Falconized 24 TDX. It's not as well made, uh, but it would do the trick and has a slightly larger controller and all that stuff. Both of these lights can be built as a softbox, which I have have right here and it works really really well for a nice large soft lightweight setup you will also need two sandbags one six inch mathalini cardellini vice grip whatever you want to call it one super clamp and one super clamp six inch extension with a spigot we'll also need an additional spigot for our light a 13 dollar microphone arm and a microphone of choice for this setup i am actually using i'll pull it down into frame here a Rode Video Micro, and I have an extension cable running to the camera, and it is mounted to a ball head, which is on the actual arm. And then optionally, you can use a power strip for powering everything or a V-mount battery, and on the controller of each of those lights, there is a D-tap, so you could use that to power your camera using the appropriate cable. The last couple of items are kind of cheating, but pretty necessary and that is some kind of background lighting. I could add it to the stand, but that's gonna make this thing just ginormous. So I would recommend picking up one or two lightweight stands and one or two Bowling P1 LED lights. They're RGB, they're great. I'm using one right now and they're phenomenal. You might not need these at all if you have natural light or good lighting in your room, but since I'm gonna figure that no one has lights at all, we're gonna throw those in. You also need some kind of tripod head or ball head for mounting your camera. And finally, we have the camera and lens, which I'm recommending the Sony A6400 and the Sigma 16 millimeter F1.4. This combination makes for an amazing arm's length or beyond style YouTube setup. The autofocus is amazing on this combination. So if you are into Sony, that's a good way to go. Otherwise, you could probably use a Canon M50 or really any other camera with decent and autofocus to make this a quick and easy setup for content creation or YouTube videos. So those are all the parts. Let's now get into the actual build. So you're gonna take your stand and throw those sandbags on the base. We are going to be throwing a lot of weight on this thing and some of the weight's going to be offset. So we wanna make sure we stay safe and have those sandbags in place. Next, add one of our two grip heads on top of the stand and add your grip arm. In my case, I'm using the 40 inch because I want that extra reach if I need it. And you can collapse everything pretty easily when you're done with the setup. With your 40 inch arm mounted, we're gonna add a spigot to the other end. Also side note, make sure all your knobs are on the right side. We don't want the weight of our light to actually loosen these things. With our spigot on the end of the arm, we're going to add our light, in this case, the IntelliTech LC1. 
160. It's a bicolor light, super bright. I'm actually using it at one or 2% right now because I'm shooting this close to wide open. With our light in place, we can move on to the camera, which is going to involve adding our super clamp to the stand. And super clamps have a very specific attachment point, which allows us to take this six inch extension and slot it into the super clamp. From there, we can add the included spigot. And finally, we can thread on our tripod head. For me, I'm using just a cheap ball head. Next, we can add our camera and lens, and we're done with the camera setup. Very straightforward. You can adjust it as needed, of course. And with that taken care of, we can move on to audio. This is going to involve taking our Mathalini clamp, adding it to the stand, and adding a grip head to the end of that. Next, we're going to take our microphone arm and directly attach it to the grip head. From there, we can extend the arm and thread on our ball head or just directly thread on your microphone. Again, you can use anything here, but I'm trying to keep it semi-affordable. And as you might be able to hear, it sounds pretty good in my opinion, since we have it just out of frame. Having it on an arm like this allows us to very easily adjust where the microphone is. So usually what I'll do is I'll pull it into the shot just like this and just get it out of the shot. That's going to ensure we have it as close as possible to your subject or yourself, and that'll give you the best, highest quality audio. Of course, I have an extension cable to go from the camera to the microphone. And with that, the only thing remaining to do is a little bit of cable management, and we're done. Now, I'm using a battery in the camera, but you could buy a D-tap or P-tap to whatever style battery you have and use the controller for the light as a power supply for your camera, in which case this whole thing would be powered off of a single V mount or gold mount, and that would be pretty awesome. And that is how you can put together this insane YouTube studio on a single stand. Of course, you can use these parts for all kinds of production. This grip equipment is legit stuff. So if you don't know how to use it, you should definitely check out some videos, and there's so much you can do with these tools, even if you decide not to use this setup down the road. So here is our first setup. We have everything ready to rock and roll. And you can see I've got a nice little set behind me. I'm at arm's length from the lens. Of course, I could push this back and we'll do that here in a little bit. And now I can finally show you the power and the awesome feature that is one stand for your entire setup. Of course, we have these two little lights off to the side, but of course those can be moved around. The main difficulty is dealing with all of this stuff that you normally have on separate stands and tripods. So let's go ahead and change up the look by simply grabbing this. Give me one second. I'm simply gonna move this entire thing over here. So now if I grab this light stand, move it out of the way, just like that, we have a totally different look by moving a single stand. And of course I can grab these other stands and maybe I'll change the color real quick, just like that. And if I'm not quite happy with the framing, instead of moving a light, a microphone and the camera, I can simply grab the single stand and slide it over. Something like that, pretty amazing. So at this point, I'm going to take this whole setup and move it further away and show more of the room. So let's go ahead and start doing that. And here we have a new, completely different setup. We just pushed everything away. Another thing I can do is simply back up. Of course, I'll need to extend my microphone a little bit, but now I'm further back and I can also adjust my framing on the actual tripod head, something like that. Just a completely different setup. I could extend this arm out. I could move the light from off to this side to straight above. And if I decide I don't like this end of the room at all, I can simply grab the stand like I will here in a second and completely flip things around. So here we go. And face the other side of the studio. If I don't like the framing of this, I can make easy adjustments. Maybe I'll move it over here, do something more like that. Boom. So there's so many different ways that you can very quickly get a completely different look in a single bedroom office space. You can slightly make some tweaks with your lighting and everything, but everything can move all together. So hopefully, if anything, you got something out of this and maybe it gave you a couple ideas. I will have links to everything mentioned in the description. If you enjoy this type of content, let me know. I enjoy it and I would like to do more stuff like this, but let me know if you have any questions. Maybe we'll get some of that stuff addressed in the future. That's gonna do it for me, guys. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.